prepare for this women's B race. A whole nother host of schools that are here looking for the experience of being on this championship race course that will hopefully bring them back for a chance to race at the national championships and by virtue of just how many teams wanted to be here at pre-nats and this is not unusual that they have to seed these two races and so the b race no shortage of talent in fact we've got some of the top ranked individuals in the country towing the line in this race yeah for sure i mean i think a lot of people are looking at auburn's brenda jebchichir She's ranked number 15th right now in the country, but she's showing promise. She's only a freshman, and a lot of people are thinking, what can she do? So I think this will be a, a good, you know, little eye-opener for all of us to see how she races on this course and then comes back hopefully in November and has another shot at it. Just from the look of it, too, carries a look back behind the women there in the, uh, the kind of the grassy wooded area. It does look like the winds are beginning to uh, pick up just a little bit here. Yeah, you could hear it even in the on our camera there. It's starting to pick up, and you know we had perfect conditions to start, but it is starting to heat up as well. So you've been seeing a little bit more distress on the athletes as the day goes on. But again, I mean, you know, we might see cool, cold temperatures and snow, but we also can still see warm temperatures in November. So it's it's a good good practice for them to come here and and just to feel all the different things that Wisconsin Wisconsin can bring at you. Hey guys, thank you so much. Yeah. Bob, Bob, Bob. Final moments here is the. Uh, 40 minute mark after the hour is the official start time here in Madison. As we said, 65 degrees here on this day in October. The average temperature in Madison on November 23rd is 45. As you hear the voice of Mike Jay at the start line, the gun is up, the women are ready. As they will race six kilometers here in the B race at Prenats. As we get these athletes out on the course, we'll also have for you the uh, team lineups here for the squads as we roll through them one by one. Air Force, Auburn, Belmont, CBU, Central Michigan, Eastern Kentucky, Elon, Illinois State, Illinois, Indiana, and the rest of the teams that will unfold here on the left side of your screen. And we mentioned Auburn, and we'll keep an eye on Brenda Cheptichir, the freshman from Auburn, likely to be the favorite here in this B race on the individual side. As you look at some of these other teams too, carry like like Cal Baptist, you know, there, there's a program that relied heavily or has relied heavily on international athletes coming in, but you can really see in this kind of new wave of realignment and you know athletes being able to move to programs and not have to sit a year out that a lot of programs are really in a position to get really good really fast if they have the you know the right coaching staff the right situation and the right support from the administration yeah well remember it wasn't that long ago where if you were to transfer you had to sit out unless you had um, some sort of reasoning. So it is interesting now to see these athletes be able to transfer a little bit. I'm not quite sure how I feel about it, but I do think if an athlete isn't happy or if there's a different circumstance, it is nice that they don't get sort of penalized for being a young athlete that's you know changing their mind or wanting to make a move. Back in the day, it was tough. That's a long time to ask an athlete to sit out. 365 days, so much can change. Abigail Hassman of Northeastern among the leaders there in the early going. As we'll keep an eye on this group through the first 2,000 meters, that's when we'll get our first chance to see the full leader board as they come across the uh, timing mats. Brenda Cheptichir is among the leaders there as well in the Auburn singlet, but everyone's settling in here in the early going after blistering races in the A race. And, you know, always struck by these, these uh, 
races as they unfold on a race day, you don't get the same race every time, which is one of the great things about our sport is that sometimes it's not about chasing the fastest time and a record setting time. And this one, at least in the early going, everyone kind of staying within a half step of each other. Well, we've seen it in all the races. It's almost like they get through this first set of hills and then things start to happen, right? And maybe that's where the coaches are all kind of in agreement that let the race come to you after you get through that first real big climb. Warm yourself up into it, turn your brain off. I, some of the best advice I was ever given was don't think and just race. So get through a certain amount of the race before you really have to start focusing and really getting hungry and, and uh, you know, ready to attack. Like stay, stay as calm and not as intense until you have to. Well, that first K is complete as they'll get themselves working their way back up towards where the start of the race occurs. Women have one fewer major climbs in their six kilometer race versus the men with three climbs at 8K, but they still face the same portions of the route that both the men and women share. Love the versatility, too, of these purpose-driven cross-country courses, too. They can really, you know, they can they can do short, they can do long, and can absorb all kinds of different types of race strategies and really a championship course that has proven time and time again to test the best in the country in this distance now today at 6,000 meters. But maybe just in the last, uh, what, two, three minutes here, Carrie, as we get set to bring them close to that two kilometer, we're starting to see a little bit of decompression of that lead group as that press from the front here by Brenda Chepchichir, as we had mentioned. And then Northeastern's Abigail Hassman Yeah, a little bit of less of a pack than we've seen in the previous races. But, you know, one thing that's really cool is the World Championships in cross country are going to be here on U.S. soil, not this January, but the following. And we've, you know, a lot of a lot of places have built these courses to hold something like a World Championships where they do multiple loops. And as a spectator, loop courses are so much fun because you can get to see your athletes. They can hear you out there. It's hard, it's still, you still want to train properly for <laughs> to become a spectator of this sport. But um, yeah, it's going to be a fun year leading up to it. And I'm wondering if we're going to see a little bit more of our professionals get back out there. I just did an interview with Caitlin Tui, uh, I don't know, early September, and she was really kind of sad to not have a cross country uh, season anymore as a professional athlete. So hopefully we can see a little bit more of that. This sport is so good. It's great for us as athletes to be able to train through and and to use as we get ready for the track. So I'm excited that we're going to have a world championship here. Yeah, World Cross will be in Tallahassee, Florida in January of 2026. Also this week noted that, uh, you know, Spokane, which is invested in track and field in infrastructure with the podium indoor facility in Spokane has now broken ground on what they hope will be a championship course. I think it's going to host an NCAA regional as well. And there's you know great heritage to cross country racing in that area that includes Washington State, which is a perfect segue because Zena Cheptu of Washington State, the freshman is among the leaders here as we're getting our first times populating our stats at 2000 meters. Hasman, Jepchichir, Cheptu are the three here with the early lead. And then as a Borovica Swanson of Northeastern, that second Northeastern athlete, the senior in fourth, just ahead of Allie Peterson of Air Force. Watching Brenda Jepchichir, I mean, this woman has done a lot in this sport already. It was interesting, I was reading about her. She spent some time in Japan where she broke nine minutes as a high schooler for 3,000 meters. That's pretty, that's moving, right? I mean, that's pretty dang fast. And then she ran 1545, but she's also run 109 for the half marathon. So she's got this big, big base, this big engine, but also 
she's pretty speedy over the middle distances. So it's fun to have her here today. We can finally see her. I, I haven't been able to watch her race yet this year. So uh, just with all of her her stats behind her, she's clearly running that way. She's very confident in where she's at. You can see that in her form and in her face here, just leading the charge. So Washington State on the team side here in the B race. Chep two out of Kenya running alongside Jep Chichir competing in the World Athletics under 20 championships back in 2021 finished fourth just off the podium at 5,000 meters and of course long heritage of great Kenyan athletes over the years that have competed all the way back to the days of Henry Rono at Washington State as that has always been a great pipeline of international caliber distance runners, particularly from Kenya. As you look down the athletic course tracker, keeping an eye on where these athletes are as they go adjacent and parallel to that finish line out on kind of this kind of second long loop that will carry them back to the finish line and that course elevation tracker also showing you kind of the undulations that they face again that second sort of we'll call it a major climb but the second real climb towards the tail end of that race with a little more than a kilometer to go but these two going side by side now stride for stride as we continue the racing here in the b race nearing nine and a half minutes and three k in so halfway home and it's now a two-woman race It definitely is. It's always so interesting to see how athletes actually race. Jep Chichir from Auburn is sort of one stepping in front of Cheptu. That's that common term on, in distance runners, the one stepper, right? But right now that's where she's at. She's just one step leading a little bit, but waiting to see what Cheptu does. You know, being that Jep Chichir has that great half marathon time, but also the speed of being a sub nine minute, 3000 meter runner, Wondering if Jep2 knows that and if she will take over and try to push that speed out of her legs. Well, and Kara, we don't get an official halfway split, but I know, you know, sub sub 10 minute performance. I mean, they're running just as quick. <laughs> they could have been just yep. as much in the mix in that A race and the, the way this is seated by virtue of the teams. You know, they're now really, this is the, the first time we've really seen kind of a just a two person race this early in a race today. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that they probably knew going in to keep an eye on each other and it it might be up to those two. Maybe they even have chatted a little bit. We don't know. But, you know, it's it's interesting to see how much distance they've put on in this last K. They really have broken it up. If you were not with us earlier in the day, that women's A race proved to be the fastest race ever run over 6,000 meters on this course. Pamela Koske of New Mexico, also a freshman, first woman ever under 19 minutes. In fact, led a group of six women all under the previous record on the course that was set by some person named Parker Valby, you may, may be aware of. Uh, she was a decent runner back in her day at the University of Florida. Just announced her her new kit sponsor for her professional career. And that record book now rewritten very quickly. And we'll also, you know, not only keep track of how this race unfolds with the top two in this B race, but how they actually would have finished had they been in that A race earlier in the day. But Right now, just nearing 12 minutes elapsed on the clock here in this women's B race. It is just the two of them, Brenda Cheptichir and Dana Cheptu, the two freshmen, one from Auburn, the other from Washington State. And Abigail Hasman, who had the lead at 2,000 meters, trying to stay with them, but there's still a good gap between first, second, and then third. Well, this is always that good feeling on this course. They know they have just that last now loop to go. So they're getting through everything that they need to get through. They've seen it all. And now they have the comfort knowing they're 
they've been there, done that. So Jep to cheer, Jep to leading this this race. Looking at their track times though, Paul, they are very close. 856, 857 for 3,000 meter PBs. Also right around 1530 for 1540, excuse me, 40 and 45 for their 5,000 meter PBs. So two athletes that are very similar in talent. See the rest of the field pretty much in single file here as they make that turn and then back in contact with the leaders, Chep Chichir of Auburn, Chep Tu of Washington State. Waiting for the 4K mark for our leaders to reach and then followed by the rest of the individuals. We'll also update the team scores for you. That'll be two thirds complete in the racing here at Zimmer Championship Course in Madison, Wisconsin. Now nearing 14 minutes elapsed on this race. Well, I love what the pre-nationals would do for an athlete and does for an athlete just by setting them up to, to figure out where they're at as we see here some of the team scores come through. But yeah, just to be able to go home and start working on some things if that's the case. Like trying to figure out if they need to work a little bit more on their VO2 max. If it is more of the strength training and speed training that you get from hill repeats, mile repeats, whatever it may be, but so much information comes out of this race. They had those results up for you for a moment, but they did not reflect Chep to cheer, Chep to or Hasman. So maybe they were running so fast they got across the uh, timing apron and the chip didn't even register. Now we see them back here in center of picture. Chep to in second. Chep to cheer still in the lead. They've now updated those uh, those times in the system, so if we bring back up the current standings on our graphics, they should be correct. Jep Chichir, 13, 16.1 through 4,000 meters. Jep to right there next to her, same time. Hassman, just about, what, eight seconds back of the leaders. And Lavasas of Miami of Florida, there in fourth, ahead of Hill of Illinois in fifth. Now we're seeing Jep Chichir. Starting to put a little bit of a move here on Chep2 and trying to break this thing open. She's got to use this momentum coming down this hill to get into the final climb. There's still some a little bit of an up as they finish, but this is the big one here. As you can see, right as she starts to approach it, dips her chin just a little bit. She Her arms go up just a little bit. She's starting to pump those hands, pump those elbows back, and really stri try to stride through this hill as she puts some distance on, Paul. Yeah, it really has over this last minute of racing as we see the team race and the spread for Washington State a little over a minute and a little under a minute for Air Force as they are currently in second. Northeastern with a strong performance at the front led by Hassman, who's been trying to stay with Jep Tichir and Chep Tu. She's back in third position. But right now, as you see the uh, course tracker is there down at that southernmost point of the course where we kind of lose a little bit of our signal here as they go into that wooded area. So we'll keep our eye on them coming out of that area and into the closing stretches of this race. Probably less than three minutes of running now here for Chep Chichir as she tries to win this B race for the Auburn Tigers. Well, I liked where Hob Hobson Samuel, he really put the hammer on right here. This is where he used this little bit of a downhill before they have to start to climb just a little bit to the finish. And he used that momentum and he really went hard. And you can see that. That's what we're seeing right here as Brenda Jepchichir puts on the distance from Zena Cheptu. She's trying to get it going. She's been hammering. She's been one stepping. And now it's her time to just kind of let it rip. That elevation tracker shows they're now up onto relatively even ground. There'll be a little bit more rise in that last little stage as they get close to the finish line. But Jep Chichir, with that crowd urging her on, you can see now all alone with the lead in this B race, 17 and a half minutes in. 
but a strong run by Brenda. She looks like she has that strength as her CV says with the 109 half marathon, but also she has that rhythm of being a very good middle distance runner, but she really put the pressure on. It's there's still some time in the race and you know, we can't say she's won it yet, but she looks like she's on her way to winning this race and no looking back, just all eyes forward. This is a strong performance for a woman that is ranked, I think, 15th in the country right now. She will be happy, I think, with this race. Yeah, gets the same benefit of the same course that all the women in the A race witnessed. And thinking about plans to be back here in November. Cheptu has run well, also a freshman, so a lot of youth being served in these races here today, Kerry, as we had the freshman Koske from New Mexico winning the A race. Look like we're gonna have a freshman here win the B race. As they close in here on the last little bit of this women's B race. And Jep Tichir gonna make that turn for home now. Well, the fastest time last year ever run on this course was 1917 by Parker Valby. We're not going to probably see her dip under that, but she's going to be close to that time, and she's going to be, I think, excited about where this race will take her. Yeah, top 10 finish in the A race would have been 1937 or better, maybe just shy of that as well, but definitely going to be like a top 20 performance had it been in the A race. Cheptichir with the racers now coming in behind her one by one, going to get to the finish line first here and take this B race at 6,000 meters, getting in under 20 minutes on the clock, it would appear, with just a few more strides to go. Chep two of Washington State back there in second. And Chep to cheer right at the 20 minute mark. It'll be two, 20 minutes, 1.4 seconds for her. Chep two second. Hasman will hold on for third. And then that's Lavasis of Miami of Florida, who will cross the line in fourth. And then a race here in fifth position. It looks like Anaya Mosley of Ohio State, the junior, will close with a nice strong finish and will round out the top five. Hill of Illinois. There is Elena Stone Boggs of Washington State. Allie Peterson of Air Force in eighth. Ellie Wolski of Vanderbilt in ninth. And Mary Kate Finn of UMass Lowell makes the top 10 here in the B race at Prenets. Jeff Tichir running both. Well, she got through the first 2K in 628. Her last two 2K splits were 647 and 645. Pretty spot on, pretty even pacing. Now the race to the finish line for all these squads. Washington State has its fifth runner in, so they're the first to populate with an unofficial team score of 77 points as they look ahead to the championship season ahead. Air Force in there with 148 points for second. Vanderbilt currently and unofficially in third. See the spread for Air Force, 49.9 points. Finishes in eighth, 19th, 33rd, 40th, and 48th. Ohio State now in fourth position in the team standings, and Auburn gets its fifth runner in. But again, you can see that dynamic changing of the score as the results become official. Northeastern now fourth. Ohio State is currently in fifth. And as we've seen from many of these races, the challenge for all these athletes to get themselves to and across the line as they've been challenged by this course all day long here in Madison.
Not sure you're preparing for 65 degree cross country runs in Wisconsin in October. <laughs> well, times are definitely changing. It has been warm. It's, you know, we haven't had in the Midwest a ton of cool mornings. This was the first week that we actually saw some 30s and, and 40s, and I was not happy about it. I'm just saying, I like it warm. <laughs> I don't like to have to get up an extra five minutes early just to layer. But, you know, I know that uh, it feels like cross country when you can feel the crispness and also see the the beautiful colors. And we can see it, you know, in Madison that the colors are there. And it definitely smells like cross country with the fresh grass and all of that. So. Keep the. Keep the camera here on the finish line as we keep an eye out for some of the athletes you may have been tuning in to watch get themselves across the line. A reminder, live results available online and populating those places down at the bottom, keeping those top nine individuals in view and the scores beginning to uh, no longer change up in the, that team result. So for the moment, seems comfortable to say that Washington State will take the B race here at pre-Nats. Air Force will finish second. And Vanderbilt will finish in third. One more race to follow. About 15 minutes from now, it'll be the men's B race over 8,000 meters. As these final few women get themselves to the line. And Carrie, one of the things I'm struck by is you you know, kind of watched both of these uh, A and B races. While collegiate sports has been in a state of significant chaos, the uh, the sport is still vibrant. So many programs bringing teams here and, you know, giving lots of these high school athletes opportunities at the next level. And, you know, that's the one great thing about such a high participatory sport like track and field and cross country is that the, you know, the collegiate system is really supporting at all levels, not just the uh, Division One level, but down into uh, you know Division Two, II, Division Three, and NAIA. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think that we can see just in numbers that this sport is growing and growing, and and that's why I think we're seeing better performances all over the place because this sport is getting more popular as time goes on. And you know, like a big shout out to Abigail Hossman. She was 94th at the NCAA's last year, but she was the first woman to qualify for Northeastern's his, in, in the history of Northeastern. So, you know, that's that stuff is cool and that stuff is exciting for people to want to be a part of history. And, you know, for her to go on and, you know, to go out and get into the real world and say that you were the first person to make NCAAs for that college, that's a big thing. So yeah, I mean, it's exciting to see this sport continue to grow and and to continue to give back. I think both you and I love this sport so much and we love what it does for us, that it's fun that it continues to keep growing and it continues to be a part of their lives as they grow older. I mean, I'm getting old now, I'm a mature athlete. That's what I like to say, I'm maturing. <laughs> and I'm not gonna be nearly as fast as I once was, but I still love every minute of it. So it looks like we got most everybody to and through the line here in this women's B race. So we'll look back on how this race unfolded over the course of the 6,000 meters here. It was a good effort by the two that eventually took control of this race and Brenda Cheptichir and Zeta Cheptu, but credit goes also to Abigail Hasman for trying to hold on as long as she could. She would wind up third, but this battle between the two freshmen leads to Cheptichir taking the victory in a shade over 20 minutes on the clock, 2.006. That time now official for Cheptichir, Cheptu second, 11 seconds back of the leader. 